case I've got folks out there that don't know how to cook pinto beans or the churro beans like you get at the Mexican restaurants uh, and a lot of barbecue places will have pinto beans I'm gonna show y'all how I cook my pinto beans so if you know how to do it just watch it and talk to me while I'm doing and if you don't know how you'll have a good dish that's full of protein and good for you a lot of fiber, a lot of protein, and a lot of good taste. So I'll get y'all over to the counter and show you how I clean them, and then we'll get to the stove and get them to cooking. I'm so glad y'all are in the kitchen with me. It's real quiet. Jordan's here, but he's still asleep, and Troy's outside doing something. So just me in here and all of my people around the butcher block. That's fun. Okay, the first thing you do is you get your beans. I've already washed these, but I'm just going to show y'all the method. And you hold them in your hand, and you look for rocks or hunks of dirt in them. And then once you've done all of your beans, and I'm cooking four cups of beans. When I do that, then I cover them in water. Now you can use a strainer or a sieve, a colander, whatever you want to call it, but this is just what I would rather do. I get them, let me put them where you can see, and I just pick them up and put them down and squish them around to get all the dirt off of them. Now this is the fourth washing for these. And then I pick them up out of that bowl and put them in another bowl. And when you do it like this, most of the dirt will stay in the bottom. Don't scrunch against the bottom picking them up. Just, you know, just kind of get them out. There shouldn't really be much dirt left in here because I've washed them three times. Now, when you get to this point, if you want to put them in a colander or a strainer or sieve, whatever you call it, see there's not much in that water. So I feel like they're clean. So now I'm going to take y'all over here to the stove and show you what I'm doing to get ready to put them in the pot. Okay, I've taken, I don't know, probably three-fourths of a cup of bacon ends and pieces, and there's always big old pieces of fat and all in there, and I've just cut it up, and I'm rendering the fat out some and browning the bacon until it's almost crisp. And then what I like to do is put my beans in here for two or three minutes and just stir them around in the hot grease. Um, a friend of mine that worked at a cafeteria said that's how they did theirs and it would speed up the cooking process. I don't always do it that way, but you can. Now I have used my garlic press and I have done about five big, this is recycling a lid, five big cloves of garlic minced that I'm gonna put in here. And I'll still use onion and garlic powder, but, okay, I'm going to add my beans in. Now you have to wash them because if you don't, they'll burn. I'm just heating them through, and then when I put the water in, they'll cook quicker. Now you can use plain water or you can use bouillon, whichever you would rather. I'm just going to use plain water that I put through my Brita filter because we have a lot of calcium and it just, I don't like the cloudiness of the water with calcium in it. So I'm going to let these warm up and then I'll be back to add the water and the seasoning and I'll let y'all see exactly what I'm doing. now. Right before I get ready to add the water, I'm going to stir in my, my garlic for just a jiffy. And uh, then we'll get, and then I'll put a lid on these. I'll check them every once in a while, but they'll cook a couple of hours, maybe two and a half hours, until they're just mashed against the side of the pot. Okay, now unless you have time to stand here and stir them, because they, sometimes they kind of stick on the bottom from whatever it is that's in the bacon, you want to just go ahead and put the water on them. You don't want to put the beans in like this. So, you know, be aware that you ruin your whole meal in a quick hurry by letting your beans scorch. 
So I'm going to make sure none are stuck. And I've got about six cups of water that I'm fixing to put in here. You know, sometimes when you cook bacon, it has some stuff that, I guess it's what they cure it with. It makes it sticky and it, it makes a mess. All right, I'm going to put these six cups of water in. Remember, I had four cups of beans and three-fourths of a cup to a cup of bacon ends and pieces that I put in there. I forgot to put my garlic in while it was still just beans, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in now. Now, if you don't like that much garlic, that's to taste, okay? Always do it your way. I think I'm going to add a little bit more water so I'll have my seasoning right and I won't be diluting it down. And I went ahead and just used water that wasn't filtered because I need to hurry. I'm going to put that's one tablespoon two three tablespoons of onion powder and about a, even though I put garlic I'm going to put garlic powder and put about a tablespoonful now salt is what's iffy with me because this Himalayan salt is uh, pure salt so I'm going to start out with about that's about a teaspoonful and we'll see how that goes. And because your bacon's cooked, you can taste of your juice when you get it going and then put the lid on it and let them simmer. I want a taste of this to make sure I got my seasoning right. I think that's just right and it's got quite a bit of garlic and I like a lot of garlic now like I said if you don't like a lot of garlic just put a couple of big cloves in there but I'm gonna let this cook down and I think I'm gonna quarter an onion and drop in there because if April comes she don't like onion chopped up in it she'll eat garlic all day long but I'd like to have the flavor of an onion so if I quarter it she can pick the big pieces out so I'll probably put some onion in just going to put the lid on there and let them cook. Well, let me put it, bring it back up to a boil. Bring it back up to a boil and then I'll put the lid on and just let it cook for a while. I may add some, I have some freeze dried hatch peppers. I may add them later. You could cut a jalapeno up in it if you want it a little warmer. But this is the basic charro beans or pinto beans. And uh, a lot of people will put a tablespoon of sugar in there. Troy doesn't like the beans sweet, so I'm not going to add any sugar. But he can't have very many of them anyway. But uh, I'm not adding sugar. If it was just for me, yes ma'am, it would have sugar in it. Okay, the kitchen is closed. The beans are done. And we fix the taste of them. I know they're good because I've already tasted of them. But I'll show y'all how good they are. Okay, y'all. They're really, really hot, but I'm going to taste them. But I'm going to have to cool them a little bit. I'm chewing the meat that's in them because the beans are so soft, you could just mash them with your tongue and swallow them. Those are so good. And you can adjust the seasoning to what you and your family prefer. Now, I'm going to put a squirt of ketchup on mine, and some of y'all are going to want to barf over that, but I like ketchup on everything. So you can cut fresh tomatoes up in them. You could add some uh, canned tomatoes if you wanted to. But I just used to put me a little bit of ketchup on mine. When April was little, I raised her right. She liked ketchup. She said, man, ketchup would make a piece of wood taste good. 
That's about how we feel about it. Ketchup is good stuff. And y'all know it's red. I've got to like it. Listen, these beans are scrumptious. So, you can have you some beans in your pantry, some onion and garlic powder and some salt, even if you didn't have any bacon to put in them. That would make a wonderful meal. But you know what you can do in place of not having bacon in the icebox to brown off? Buy you a package of those bacon bits. And I think you can vacuum seal them in jars like in, little, like in the little half quarter pints. Just enough for a seasoning. And you could put those in your beans and that would give it that good smoky bacon flavor. But I've cooked them a lot of times without any bacon at all, just just beans and the seasoning in them, and they're very good. Now I was going to tell y'all, if you are uncomfortable trying to figure out how much garlic, how much onion powder, blah, 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 one of the best across the board seasonings to use with nothing else is the Goya Adobe seasoning, and it's the one with the red lid on it. It's an all-purpose seasoning, and let me tell y'all something. This makes beans, cabbage, green with anything. The seasoning is spot on. So if you don't want to do what I did and add your garlic and onion powder and your salt, get you a bottle of this. It's only like, I think, $3 at Sam's for this big one. But you can get smaller ones at the grocery store. It's over there where the uh, Goya stuff is. And that, at our store, it's in a separate little section. So let me get it up close where y'all can see. That's one of the best all-purpose seasonings I've ever found. So, you know, I've been telling you, beans and rice, that'll fill your tummy up. Rice takes water and salt to cook. You don't have to have butter to put in it. If you didn't have butter, you could put a little bit of oil of some kind if you wanted something in it. Get something in your pantry that will sustain you <coughs> if you should need to depend on it. Also, about breakfast, we've talked about grits and, and oatmeal and cream of wheat and stuff like that, that that's made from grain that'll fill you up and keep you full for a while. Y'all need to think about putting some stuff in your pantry. Don't depend on your mama and don't depend on your neighbor. Don't put them in that position. Get your own stuff together and, and be self-sufficient and have a little bit extra in case you get a hurricane, an earthquake, an an unexpected flood comes to the area, you can help other people. There's always a need to have a few extra groceries put up. Better get them while you can afford them. Because the price of groceries is going to keep going up and your wages are not going to keep going up. So if you could spare a few nickels today to buy something at this price, you'd be pretty wise to do it because in a month or two it's going to be two or three times that much probably. When your light bill can double in one month just because they want to charge more, the grocery store can do what they want to do too. So y'all better think about it. Prepare for the future. I'm going to step down off my box now and go finish the rest of my meal. I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend. And uh, it's Saturday here and I don't think this video will come out till first of the week. But hope you're making some good memories and spending some time with your family. It's important to gather your family around the dinner table and have your meals together, sharing what went on through the day. You learn a lot of stuff that way. People just open up and talk and it's fun. And it makes memories and it gives your family a sense of cohesiveness and belonging to each other. When one eats over here on a TV tray and one takes theirs to the bedroom and one goes and sits in front of the TV with a, a plate, y'all aren't doing anything for your family. And if we don't get back to building families and family relationships, this world sure is going to fall apart. So get your family together. If it's just a bologna sandwich and tater chips, sit down at the table and eat it together. Have family meal time. That's very important. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. I sure hope you're listening to what I'm saying and doing a little bit of it. I'll see y'all again in a few days. I read.